So I've been getting a lot of feedback on doing some little informational videos on these harnesses. Um, so this one in particular is for a New Edge GT. There is a difference in wiring between a GT, Mach 1, Cobra, and earlier, later, uh, 9902 V6s and 0304 V6s. They're completely wired differently. Uh, this one in particular though is for a O2 GT getting a Gen 2 swap with a T56. Um, but I'm going to speak to an aspect of what it would be for a Gen 1, 2, and 3, <laughs> which is pretty simple. Uh, just this side of it's a little different. Um, so we'll start there. So on a Gen 1, you're going to use the blue wire only. It ties into pin 13 on the main engine harness connector. Um, it, like again, I said ties in. You're not cutting anything. You're going to splice it in line. There's a quick disconnect there if, in case you have to, have to remove anything. Um, Gen 2, you're going to use blue and gray. Blue ties into pin 70, gray pin 69 at the main engine harness connector. Um, again, splices in, not cutting anything out. You're just going to add it in. The way I normally do it, tell people to do it, is try to go three, four, five inches back off the connector. I try not to get too close to the connector for, to not have too much strain on the wire. Um, but I'll use my strippers and just cut a little insulation about a um, quarter, half inch. Strip the insulation with an exacto blade, wrap the wire, strip a little in this wire, wrap it and solder it, and then depin it from the connector and put some heat shrink over it and repin it. Um, and then I always recommend starting the car with this unplugged if it's a first time starting it with it unplugged to make sure there's no interference, which it's very rare but has been seen before, particularly on Gen 1 swaps. So I always try to start it disconnected on a first time start. And then um, if all goes well, plug it back up, then start again, make sure there's no interference, and then you're good to go. Um, on Gen 1s, though, you will see a tack flutter. Uh, there was a solution for a filter, but the filters are common to fail. Um, I've been trying to figure out another solution. I just haven't really made the time to actually figure it out. Um, so hopefully, hopefully sometime I'll have an actual fix for that. But... Um, then we'll get down to the other stuff. You got a coolant temp sensor. Um, I didn't speak. Gen 3 is a whole nother adapter. So I'll put a link to the adapter um, in the page um, in the description. And that'll cover that. But it's it's not as simple. It's a much more complex. But back to the coolant sensor. So LMR sells a bung sensor combo. Um, I recommend it just because of the bung itself is you get it, but the sensors are kind of sketched. So I've seen some fail right out of the box and even from local parts stores, all of the low name, no brand, no brand sensors, no name brands, uh, fail right out of the box. I had a guy go through five of them before he got a new one. And I basically, what I learned is that I always get the high grade quality sensors that you can get or an OEM one, if you can get one. So that's just plug and play. Just plug into the block good to go you can put it in line in a hose which is fine um if you got like an external gauge that actually tells you the temp um then you can do that just for the purpose of because this and this have to work in order for the ac to work so again this goes this is plug and play so in order these to work these uh, this th this has to work for this to work so then you got oil pressure now this is to utilize a uh, 11 to 14 oil pressure sensor from F-150. Um, you can put that directly into the oil filter adapter. Um, Power by the hour also sells a uh, stacker um, that allows you to use two sensors at once. Um, mostly you needed it for the Gen 3. Because Gen 1 2, you could just put that sensor in and just plug this up and be gone. But Gen 3, you have to run... Um, uh, two sensors so now we'll get up to the trans portion um, this is for again a stick shift um, all this plugs up to the factory locations up at the body harness um, it's got the starter circuit jumped um, reverse light speedo and then this VSS signal out uh, just so that if he decides to do a, a lockout module he just simply ties into that pigtail but all this is pretty much ready to go so all this is all new OEM uh, main connector. Um, let's see here. I just about covers it. 
Uh, the F-150 stuff is kind of similar. Uh, obviously, the main connector is different uh, visually. Uh, pinouts can vary between Lightning uh, or just base model trucks. Um, that's pretty much it. Again, you got oil pressure, AC, coolant, tack, Speedo, VS, Speedo VSS, reverse lights, signal out, and then that's the body harness connector for 12 volts to the reverse lights. Um, hopefully that was a decent rundown of it. Um, if I do a Cobra version, like an 0304 Cobra, and it's going to have the lockout solenoid already built in because it gets the reference from that body harness connector for the uh, lockout solenoid itself. Um, but again, Cobra, GT, Mach, V6, they're all wired a little differently. Um, but that's just the gist of it. Um, any more information, you just let me know. But uh, I think that pretty much explains everything. Thank you.